Industries and handicrafts. Industries and mining. Industry is the production of goods from raw materials. For example, iron ore can be smelted and used to make swords. In this case, iron ore is the raw material and swords are the final products or goods. Handicrafts are activities such as basketry, pottery and woodwork that require special skills and artistic knowledge. Mining refers to the extraction of minerals from the soil. Many minerals have been in use in Africa since time immemorial. These include gold, copper, iron, tin and salt. Industries in pre-colonial Africa. Industries have a long history in Africa. During the Stone Age, man is believed to have used stone, bones and wooden tools in order to sustain his livelihood. The stone tools were used for killing prey and slaughtering the animals for meat. Wood was used to make traps, spears and other tools. Bone tools were mostly used for fishing. Later, the tool-making industry improved as man discovered the smelting and use of metals such as copper, tin and iron. Improved tools subsequently led to the development of other industries such as hunting, agriculture and textile production. Industries are differentiated according to the raw materials they deal with. In pre-colonial Africa they existed different types of industries. They included the following. Metalworking industry. Metals such as iron, gold, copper and bronze were used by Africans in the pre-colonial days. These metals were mined from their ores. The metal ores were smelted in furnaces in order to separate the metal from the rock. A furnace is an enclosed space for heating metals to very high temperatures. At very high temperatures, Metals melt and can be shaped into a variety of items such as tools, weapons and ornaments. Advantages of metalworking Ah, uh, metal items do not break easily. They are more durable than the stone and wood tools used by early man. B. Old or broken metal items could be smelted and made into new items. In this way, metalworking reduced wastage of raw materials. C. Metal weapons such as swords and spears gave great military advantage to the communities that used them. They could easily defeat communities that used stone or wooden weapons. D. Metal items were used as a measure of wealth. For instance, in ancient Egypt one's wealth was gauged from the amount of gold he had. E. Metal items were used in trade. For example, iron bars or hose were used as currency by some communities. 1. The use of metal tools in agriculture led to increased food production. G. Metal items were used for decorative and religious purposes. For example, in Benin bronze was used to make religious masks and to decorate the king's palace. Sate making. During the pre-colonial period, people produced salt in three ways. 1. Salty water from the sea or salty lakes was put in pans and left outside in the sun. The heat from the sun evaporated the water, leaving crystals of salt. 2. Salty plants were burned, then their ashes were collected and dissolved in water. The solution was sieved and then the water was evaporated. 3. Some areas had deposits of salt on the ground. Salt collected from such places was first dissolved in water. This solution was then sieved and boiled. Boiling made the water to evaporate leaving salt crystals. Advantages of salt making. Ah, uh, salt was a useful ingredient in cookery. It made the food tasty. B, salt was used as a food preservative. Foods such as beef and fish could be treated with salt to make them last longer. The ancient Egyptians preserved large quantities of food in salt and used it to trade with people from the Middle East. C, salt had medicinal uses. For example, it was used to heal wounds and to treat stomach ailments associated with pregnancy. D. In Egypt, salt was also used during mummification. To mummify is to preserve a dead body by treating it with special substances and wrapping it in cloth. The Egyptians kept bodies in salt for 70 days so as to preserve them. B. E. Since salt was a scarce commodity, it was also used as a medium of exchange and a measure of wealth. For example, among the nomads of the Danical Plains in Ethiopia. In the 12th century, merchants in Timbuktu, a center for trade and education in the Sahara Desert valued salt as highly as gold and books. F. 
Animal hides were cured using salt before being used to make clothing. Fun fact. Some of the oldest roads still in use in Africa and Europe were originally constructed for the transportation of salt. Food processing. Traditionally, grain was dried in the sun before being stored. Cereals such as maize and millet were prepared by pounding using a mortar and pestle or by grinding using stones to make flour. In Zimbabwe, dry maize grains were mixed with the ashes of dry maize cobs in order to control weevils. Many communities built granaries in which to store grains. Meat and fish were preserved by drying, smoking or salting. Cassava, bananas and potatoes were cut into thin pieces and dried in order to preserve them. Sometimes, sweet potatoes and cassava were harvested and stored in large pits in the ground. Among the wangindo, mushrooms, green maize and cund leaves were boiled and then dried their freshness. Alcoholic drinks were made from honey, fruit grains or tree sap. For example, the Chaga and Baganda brewed alcohol from bananas while the Wandanjariko used papas. Traditional methods of cooking included boiling, roasting and baking in hot ash. Advantages of food processing. Uh, food processing prepared food for consumption. The community got food ready to meet everyday needs. B. The alcoholic beverages produced were used for leisure and religious ceremonies. For example, beer was used as a refreshment or an offering to the spirits or gods. C. Food preservation methods ensured that the community had food even during periods of drought or when the harvest was not enough. D. Food items could be used in trade. For instance, the Egyptians traded salted foods for Phoenician timber and dye. Handicrafts in pre-colonial Africa Handicrafts are activities where one uses skills with the hands and artistic ability to make things. Common handicrafts in pre-colonial Africa included textile production, leatherworking, weaving and basketry, pottery, woodworking and house construction. Textile production Textile production is the making of cloth from various materials. Textile production was one of the earliest handicraft industries in the African continent. Some of the oldest surviving garments in the world have been found in ancient tombs in Egypt. Among the fibers used in the manufacturing of textiles in Africa were bark, bast, raffia, silk, wool and cotton. Silk, wool and cotton were spun. This means that they were made into thread. Bark, bast and raffia were non-spun fibers. Bark cloth was made from tree bark among the Nyakayusa. Buhayan. Baganda. Raffia was peeled off from the leaves of the raffia palm. This palm grows in the swamps in the tropical forests of East and Central Africa and Madagascar. Silk production was mainly done in Nigeria and Madagascar. Silk is got from the cocoons made by silkworms. Wool, on the other hand, came from sheep and goats and occasionally from camels, especially in southern Madagascar, northern Africa, Sudan and the Sahel Belt of West Africa. Weaving using wool was common among the Berbers and the Fulani. Bast fibers were obtained from the skin surrounding the stem of plants such as flax and jute. Early Egyptians made linen textiles from flax. The flax plants grew in great numbers along the banks of the River Nile. Cotton was grown in many parts of the continent. Cotton cloth was made by the Yoruba of Nigeria and in Guinea. Among the Fipa of Tanzania. Cotton yarn was prepared by rolling the lint on the spinner's thighs. Cotton cloth was woven on local looms. Various fibers were mostly decorated through dyeing. Among the Asante of Ghana, a dinkra cloth was printed using black dye from tree bark and stumps carved from sections of a calabash. A variety of items were made from textiles, including blankets, carpets, ordinary clothes as well as funerary clothes. Advantages of textile production uh, This industry enabled people to make clothes for everyday use and for special occasions such as weddings and funerals. B. Clothes manufactured were often traded for other items such as food. This way, the community could get items it needed but did not produce. C. Textile producers made blankets for keeping warm during the cold seasons. This helped to keep away diseases and death caused by very cold conditions, especially in mountainous regions. D. Cloth was used to make sails which were used by fishermen and sailors in the lakes and seas. 
Sails enabled sailors to travel farther and longer than when using oars. This encouraged traveling over water and also improved fishing. E. As early as the 14th century, strips of cloth were used as a form of money or medium of exchange and trade. This was especially common in West Africa in the savanna belt between Senegal and Lake Chad. Strips and rolls of cloth were units for measuring value and wealth. F. Some of the clothes were specifically made for ceremonial rites. For example, there were shrouds clothes for wrapping a dead body before it is buried, marriage clothes such as the ones used by the Dogon, and healing clothes like those used by Yoruba women healers. G. Symbols printed on textiles could be used to pass on aspects of the community's culture. An example are the Adinkra symbols that were used on pottery, walls and cloth in ancient Ghana. Leatherworking Leatherwork involved the use of hides and skins to make various items. The craftsmen produced belts, sandals, tents, clothes, straps, bags, sleeping skins and shoes. Fun fact. The talking drums of West Africa imitate pitch patterns of a language and transmit messages over many miles. D. Leather articles were used in trade. They were exchanged with other products such as grains and vegetables to meet the community's needs. E. Leather was used for making houses, especially among the pastoral people such as the Somali. F. Leather was used for making shields, slings, bowstrings and other weapons. These were important when fighting other communities. G. Ropes for tying bundles or tethering animals were also made of leather. Leather was strong enough to hold things such as firewood together and also to prevent livestock from straying. Weaving and basketry. Some people were skilled in making various items by weaving. The raw materials used included grasses, leaves and fibers from palms and reeds. The products made included baskets for general use, food baskets, lidded containers, bags, fish traps, beds, ropes and mats. In East Africa, the Lua were experts in basketry while the Nyakayusa were renowned for making mats. Advantages of weaving and basketry uh, Some communities built houses and boats by tying planks of wood using woven ropes. For example, among the Waswahili along the east coast of Africa. B. The weaving and basketry craft also supplied the community with household items, such as furniture, beds and mats, as well as kitchen utensils. For example, the ungo for winnowing grain and the kifumbu for sieving coconut. These items made life more comfortable. C. Items made by weavers could be used during trade in exchange for weapons, food and other requirements. D. Woven containers enable communities to carry loads more easily. The Kenyan Ajikuayu and Kamba, for example, used their famous Kayondo for transporting various items. E. Woven fish traps and nets enhanced fishing. For example, the coastal people of East Africa made fish traps called mandama by plating strips of bamboo. These traps enabled them to catch fish for domestic consumption and trade. F. Woven granaries and baskets provided storage for agricultural produce. These stocks provided food when there were shortages and were also the source of seeds during the planting season. Pottery. Pottery was practiced in areas where there was suitable clay soil. Some of the famous groups in this field were the Akamba, Kisii, Batwaan, Jisu. They made items such as cooking pots, water containers, beer jars, cups, pipes and clay lamps. Advantages of Pottery uh, Pottery enabled communities to make containers for cooking food. To date, pots are still valued by many African communities such as the Chaga, Sukuma and Curia. B. Pottery produced useful containers for storing water, milk, beer and grains. C. Pottery also produced articles for trade. For example, the Masse exchanged cattle and hides for pottery and other items from their Bantu neighbors. D. Clay containers were used for serving food and drink in the homes. These containers included cups, plates and beer pots. Woodworking Wood was a very popular material for making a wide variety of items in pre-colonial Africa. The most important wooden household furniture included chairs, beds and stools. Other household objects made of wood were boxes, bowls, 
trays, plates, spoons, mortars and pestles. Wood was also a common material in the construction of houses. For example, the frames and doors of houses were often made of wood. Communities near mangrove swamps built their houses using mangrove poles because this type of wood is highly resistant to termites and rot. People living near oceans, lakes and rivers often made wooden boats and canoes. For instance, the carpenters along the Tanzanian coast dug out tree trunks to make vessels called ngirara. Weapons such as spears, bows, arrows and swords also had wooden parts. In addition, wood was used to make musical instruments such as drums, fiddles, flutes and xylophones. Woodcarvers made sculptures and ritual objects from wood. Some of the carvings were believed to ward off bad omens. Others were used during religious ceremonies, such as the wooden religious masks made in Benin. Woodwork was however a male affair. In Benin, woodcarvers were organized into guilds called Igbasanwan. The carvers worked mainly on commission from the chiefs. In Tanzania, the Zaramo and Makan produced high-quality woodcarvings, while in Kenya the Akamba were famous woodcarvers. Advantages of woodworking Ah, uh, it enabled communities to produce furniture such as stools and tables for their homes. B. Communities were able to make bowls, plates, pestles and other items for domestic use. These were important for food preparation and presentation. C. Wooden weapons were important during wars. Armies in traditional African societies relied heavily on wooden weapons such as clubs, spears, bows and arrows. D. Wooden musical instruments were used for communication and entertainment. For example, wooden drums were used as accompaniments for songs and dances, but they could also be used to give warnings or call people for meetings. E. Wooden religious items were necessary during rituals, for instance masks to ward off evil spirits and wooden statues to represent gods. The Akan of West Africa carved characters on wooden stools and walking sticks as status symbols and expressions of personal beliefs. F. Wood products were also exchanged for other items required by the communities. For example, wooden utensils could be traded for fabric for making clothes. G. Wooden canoes and boats enabled people to travel over water. House construction. House construction was an important economic activity. The materials used were determined by a number of factors such as climate, availability of materials, technology, labor, religion, family structure, kinship and class. The most commonly used materials for house construction included bricks, mud, stone, wood, grass, bamboo and leather. In West Africa, the Asante built houses with walls made of timber and plastered with clay. Roofing was done using palm leaves. The Waswahili along the east coast of Africa used stones to construct their rectangular houses. The roofs were made of palm leaves, makuti. Many coastal communities also burnt coral rocks in open kilns to produce lime. Lime was used to build strong durable walls. The Maasai built their houses using branches and cow dung. Traditional chaga houses were round. A wooden frame was put up, then it was covered with grass or banana leaves. Fun fact. In the 13th century, Kilwa was famous for its magnificent houses, palaces and mosques. Its Husuni Kubwa Palace was the largest building in Africa, south of the Sahara at that time. Advantages of house construction. Uh, houses protected people from extreme weather conditions such as hot sun and heavy rain. They were also a refuge from wild animals. B. Houses provided a place for people to store their possessions. For instance, food stores kept food reserves safe from thieves, pests and adverse weather conditions. C. Houses reflected the advancement of a society. Sophisticated designs were a source of prestige and a measure of the level of a community's development. D. Buildings provided privacy for their occupants. People could attend to personal matters without being watched or disturbed by others. E. Builders made structures for specific uses, leading to a more organized society. For instance, a Masse Boma, homestead, typically had a central enclosure for the livestock, huts for living in and an outside enclosure wall. Uses of different minerals in pre-colonial Africa. 
A mineral is a substance that is naturally present in the earth and which is not formed from animal or plant matter. Examples of minerals found in Tanzania are iron, gold, copper, diamond, tanzanite and salt. There were many minerals in use in Africa in the pre-colonial time. In this topic, we are going to discuss how some of these minerals were used. Iron By the beginning of the 19th century, most African societies were able to produce their own iron or to acquire it from neighboring communities through trade. Iron was available in many parts of the African continent. In Tanzania, there are iron ore deposits in Itu near Chunaya, Laganga and Ulugiru Mountains. The largest iron mines in Africa are found in South Africa. There are also substantial deposits in Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Angola and Zimbabwe. The status of iron workers in the traditional setting varied. In some societies, they were held in high esteem while in others they were despised. In Mali and most of Central Africa, the iron workers were held in high regard due to their skills, knowledge and power. In Darfur, in modern-day Sudan, blacksmiths were excluded from the rest of society. Similarly, in Ethiopia the blacksmiths were not allowed to inherit land or even to intermarry with other people. In Tanzania, there is evidence that iron technology was already developed in Buhaya by between the 5th and 6th centuries AD. The art was also practiced by the Maasai, Totoga, Meru and Karu as well as among the Pere and the Nyakayusa. Uses of Iron 1. Iron was used to make agricultural tools, for example pangas, hoes and axes. These implements helped to boost the production of food. 2. Weapons such as swords, daggers, arrows and spears were made of iron. Iron weapons strengthened armies that had them. They easily defeated the communities that did not use iron weapons. 3. Iron was a medium of exchange. Some communities used iron bars or iron hose as currency or as tokens when paying bride price. This was common among the Sukuma of Tanzania and in northern Nigeria. 4. In some areas, iron was a measure of wealth. People who had more iron than others were considered wealthy. 5. Iron was an important trade commodity. For instance, the Maasai traded cattle for iron weapons from the Pere and the Ajakuayu. 6. Some objects used in religious ceremonies were made of iron. For example, the Yoruba and Fon made iron objects to honor Agan, the god of iron and war. 7. Jewelry items such as necklaces, bracelets, bangles and anklets were often made of iron. 8. Iron was used to make musical instruments, for example bells, gongs and cymbals. These were a source of entertainment as an accompaniment to different types of songs. Copper The production and use of copper in pre-colonial Africa was widespread. This is because copper is found in a reasonably pure form near the Earth's surface. By 3000 BC, the Egyptians were already producing copper. It was also mined in Niger and Mauritania. However, the richest deposits of copper in Africa are found in Central and Southern Africa, in the Democratic Republic of Congo and Zambia. Uses of Copper 1. Copper was used to make ornaments such as bangles and earrings. Nedel women wore copper and brass neck rings as a status symbol representing their husband's wealth. 2. Pots, pans and other utensils could also be made from copper. 3. It was used to make weapons such as daggers and knives. 4. Egyptians used copper to make tools such as axes, fish hooks and chisels. 5. Bars of copper were used as a medium of exchange and a measure of value. 6. Copper was used as a trade commodity. Communities that had copper exchanged it for items that they did not have. 7. Copper was mixed with other metals to make alloys. An alloy is a metal that is formed by mixing two or more metals. For example, bronze is an alloy of copper and tin. Gold Gold was perhaps among the first metals to be used in Africa. Unlike most other metals, it was easy to find gold near the surface of the earth. Additionally, it did not require a complex process of purification. 
In many parts of Africa, gold was found on river beds. The kingdoms of Zimbabwe, Meru and Ghana were famous for their rich gold mines. Fun fact. South Africa is the leading producer of gold in the world. It is often responsible for between a quarter and a third of the world's annual gold production. Uses of gold. 1. It was used to make various types of ornaments such as rings, earrings, necklaces and bracelets. In ancient Egypt, gold was used to make funerary masks for the pharaohs. 2. Gold was used to make weapons, for example knife handles, especially for important rulers. 3. Gold was used as a currency as well as a measure of wealth. 4. It was used for making utensils such as plates, cups and spoons for the rich. In Egypt and Ghana, gold was used to make coins. 6. Gold was an important trade commodity. In East Africa, the town of Kilwa became prosperous due to its control of the Indian Ocean gold trade. 7. Rich people used gold to decorate buildings. The Great Mosque of Tuba in West Africa was adorned with gold, crystals, ceramics and precious stones.